All right, guys, welcome back to the bluegrass. It has turned out to be a beautiful sunny day. It's about 80 degrees, and uh, the sky is just as almost as blue as it's ever been right now. But just an hour ago, it was uh, completely black and just pouring rain. And what do we get when it's pouring rain? We get cancellations. <laughs> and so whenever we get cancellations, we try to come out here and make a little video for you guys and help you along your dog training journey. So what I do is I have Eli kind of go through those uh, emails and see what's popping up. And so one of the things that we haven't talked about very much specifically, uh, but pops up a lot in the emails is uh, timelines, right? And what I mean by that is people are always like, uh, they're always wondering, hey, Stoney, how much progress should I expect over the next month or two months or six months or, or the next year, okay? And they send me those kind of questions. And to be honest, guys, you know, those kind of questions are kind of, you know, they're, uh, they're kind of hard to answer, right? Because every situation is unique. Even me, I mean, I'm out here, you guys see me in these videos, I'm doing basically the same thing every day. You know, we come out, we exercise the dogs, we uh, work on our vocabulary and we work on our exercise with small challenges. Then we go out back and we do whatever type of specific training that we have to do. And then we go out in the world and try to find some puppy sized adventures. And so like my life, from my perspective, it doesn't change a whole lot, but you can ask Eli from working here. Like even though we're kind of doing the same things every day, every every day is also different it's also unique in its own way because every owner is unique every family situation is unique these dogs are unique and even a dog like boone you know like like boone is a different dog at this age than he was when he was first here for training you know he's just kind of back here visiting now so every day even though our overarching uh, strategy and methodology doesn't change every day we are faced with like having to customize our timeline to fit uh, our current uh, short-term and long-term goals okay so what we're going to talk about I'm gonna use all these dogs as kind of different examples is uh, we're gonna talk about some of the different things that you have to think about as it relates to uh, you know like coming up with a timeline Aspen come here okay so first two dogs we'll look at uh, Aspen and Fire Tuck. Hup, hup. Come on. Now, Aspen came to us in a, as an adult dog, and how he got here was his owners, uh, they bought a puppy, and they thought to themselves, well, you know, we have an adult dog, and he's an awesome dog, but uh, he really just doesn't mind all that well. He doesn't show good attention span. He doesn't have the best manners in the world. Uh, so this next dog, we're not going to let him fall into that same trap. We're going to make sure that we raise him right from the very beginning. Okay. So when they brought uh, Friar Tuck down here for training, they went ahead and brought Aspen too. Because like if you're dealing with dogs, you have two dogs in one household, you can't really like address each one of them individually. Like having dogs, multiple dogs is like having multiple children. You had to, you had to manage them as a unit, you know. <laughs> just say look this is the way we do things at our house and I expect everybody to conform to the rules of our household uh, you know not exactly the same but pretty close to the same okay now so since there was two dogs and one of them's an adult and one of them's a, a young puppy then I have to set my timeline accordingly now here's what's weird about that though when I'm talking about setting a, you know my timeline accordingly you would think that I have to be more patient with the puppy no, I had to be more patient with this guy. Okay, when you're a puppy, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't know anything. I mean, so like uh, if Stoney shows you something, then you go, oh, that must be the way to do it. If you're an older dog, then you like in your mind, you think I already know how to do things. Why is Stoney trying to show me how to do things differently? Okay, so in a situation where you have an older dog and a younger dog, but you would like to affect some level of change in their behavior, those are the kind of factors that influence your timeline, you know, and it's not always the obvious thing that you think is going to influence your timeline that becomes the determining factor. Rosie, oh, it's a good dog. Very nice. Now, so like, uh, let's take Rosie, for instance. Now, Rosie is the sister, wait, of a golden doodle that you guys saw uh, in some videos earlier this year, uh, a little dog named Bluebell. So, but when Rosie came to visit me, you know, she was... Uh, quite a bit older than Bluebell. Bluebell came here at 14 weeks old and Rosie comes at six months old, right? And so like the timeline adjustments, even though it's dogs out of the same litter, the timeline adjustment uh, has to be modified and because of the developmental stage differences, right? So like with Tuck and uh, uh, Aspen, I had to modify my timeline because like they're of different ages and I had to be more patient with the older dog. Well, so with Rosie, 
It's really the same thing. Yeah, right. With Rosie, I have to be more patient because Rosie is a little bit older and she had already kind of gotten in the habit of doing things the way Rosie likes to do them, okay? And the way dogs will kind of get in the habit of doing stuff is impulsively, right? I mean, that's the, that's the nature of letting a dog, uh, you know, like, kind of be a puppy and just do what puppy stuff like if you're not constantly challenging them mentally and physically then what happens is they just don't develop they need that time under tension they need to think they need to exert themselves they need to have to learn to conquer things in order to build up their ability to stay focused under high levels of distraction okay but now Rosie's doing pretty well now you know but the amount of work that it took uh, for me to get six month old Rosie to perform uh, these activities to learn our basic vocabulary and to do our basic, basic uh, exercise small challenges course it's literally twice as much labor to get Rosie to do these activities as it was to get Bluebell to do them because Bluebell started so much earlier. Now another factor that you run into like say with Rosie versus uh, say Tuck and uh, uh, Aspen is Rosie has a little girl owner. Hey Charlotte come over here for a second. All right, so now not only w when, when I have Rosie down here, do I have to get Rosie to mind for me, which is pretty easy, right? Like say Tuck and Aspen, their owners are two adults. And so it's pretty easy to tell adults, hey, this is kind of the schedule you need to keep. And these are the activities that you need to engage in. It's kind of how you need to reward them and exercise them. Whatever. And the adults just write it down uh, in their phone, put a couple of reminders in there, bam, they're off to the races. But when you have to get a dog to mind and you have to get the dog to mind so that like when little kids are around, it'll still mind. Uh, you have to adjust that timeline. There's a lot more labor going to be involved. And whenever I say labor going to be involved, I don't mean just labor of working with the dog. I mean the labor of being consistent and persistent uh, and patient yourself. Because that's really the hard part of dog training. The hard part of dog training is like not getting frustrated. So I had to get Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte, let's get Rosie. Let's take her for a walk. Come on, Rosie. And so I had to walk with Charlotte and Rosie. And I'll have to help. And so this adds, like, not only does it add, like, labor to my day, but what it adds is it adds to the amount of total time that I'm going to have to spend, uh, you know, working with the, this dog to accomplish my goals, you know. So if you have a little kid in play, up, up, then you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. You have to work a little harder. Okay, easy. Bring her off of there. Up, 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 right here. Very nice. And get her up here. Give her, give her, her attention early. There you go. Very nice. Okay. Perfect. Come on, hub. Very nice. Wait. Tell her wait. Wait. Good. Now easy. Come on over here this way. You can speed up a little bit if you want. Uh oh. Up. Oh, that's okay. that's Isabella's fault. Very nice. So now, guys, I don't know how many of you have ever, <laughs> you know, tried to manage a six-year-old daughter, but let me tell you, it adds to your timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it, Eli? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when Charlotte comes down here, everybody's timeline has to change, right? <laughs> Everything has to be just right for Charlotte or she's not happy. <laughs> so, you know, when you have a puppy that needs everything to be just right. Oh, watch out, Boone. Take her over here and put her on the table. When you have a puppy that needs everything just right and you have a daughter that needs everything just right, well, then you got <laughs> you got to get out that notebook and you have to start making those timeline adjustments. Because if you don't make a timeline adjustment, then you're going to like get frustrated because you're not making progress at the pace that you thought you were going to make progress. And that's just uh, that's the way life works. OK, now so we can take this golden doodle here. Right. So, Sammy, same thing. Like Sammy belongs to an adult human being uh, that's got a, you know, a good job and is a responsible human being. And when you give her instructions, she's just going to follow those instructions perfectly. And we're not going to have any trouble. Uh, I'm going to be like, hey, Alicia, this is what you have to do. She's going to write it down in her phone, set a reminder. She's going to do that. And we're going to have no trouble with Sammy. Okay. Except guess what? Come on, Sammy. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Uh, the, same, the, same, the same thing applies where there is a child in Sammy's life. And so it's not only a matter, come on Isabella, watch out. Uh, it's not only a matter of getting Sammy to mind, okay? It's a matter of getting Sammy to mind. Go on, Isabella. Come on, Sammy. It's getting Sammy to mind even when the person that's asking Sammy to mind is not doing everything perfectly. 
because that's the one thing you can count on with children is that they're not going to do things perfectly, you know. And we're in, in all honesty, I mean, none of us are going to do things perfectly, but at least most of us can stick to a pretty good schedule and be relatively consistent, okay? Children, they're all over the place. And not only are your children all over the place, but they bring their buddies over, right? And so, you know, these little golden doodles, they belong to all these little girls. And, uh, you know, the owners are trying to do a good job getting them to be uh, calm, attentive, and polite, and getting everybody in the household to model the behavior that they like. And they come home, and there's six little girls standing around, and the dog's wearing, uh, you know, a tutu and a bikini top, right? Because <laughs> that, that's what little girls do. They just dress dogs up, and they're not interested in making the dogs, like, uh, you know, mine and show good impulse control and show uh, good attention span. You know, they're not interested in it until they're interested in it, until they have their nice clothes on, okay? And then when they have their nice clothes on, they want the dogs to mind. Charlie, come over here and take, take over Sammy for me. <sighs> so, we have to teach Sammy, like, look, we, there's a set of expectations for you, right? And those expectations are in play, right, all the time. And so, like for Sammy to look at me and say, Stoney, I understand what you expect from me. I'll do it because you're very consistent. That's pretty easy, and that happens pretty quickly around here. But for me to be able to transfer that over to Charlotte, my six-year-old daughter, that takes a lot of extra time, a lot of extra labor. And, and like I said, the big real labor investment in there is being patient, right, and not getting frustrated. Because this, wait, this, no, see, right there. Like, I mean, we do this every day. She knows to wait right there, and Charlotte has decided she's just going to make her own little adjustment to this routine. Okay, so hup, try, try to do each exercise as I show you, baby. Okay, now, hup, hup, hup. Now, so what happens is not only am I trying to get this dog like to perform at the level that I needed to perform at, I'm trying to get Charlotte to perform at the level I need her to, to uh, perform at. And wait, and that's tough, guys. It's tough to stay patient. And you're not always gonna be able to, to be patient, okay? Sometimes, like, you're just gonna get frustrated. And when you get frustrated, like, look, just, 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 just chill for a little while. You know, and just let the kids kind of do what they're going to do and adjust your timeline. So instead of trying to keep your timeline rigid and like forcing it on the dog or forcing it on the child, like if you start having trouble, then just sit down and think, well, what would it hurt if I adjust this timeline out a little bit? So instead of, you know, the goal that I set for next month, uh, I go ahead and I adjust that out to three months from now or four months from now. What's the difference in the scheme of things? Right here, hop, hop, hop. Very nice. What's the difference? There's no big difference, right? Whether it happens this month, next month, or two months from now, up, 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 or even four months from now, right? These dogs are going to be well-trained adult dogs for 12 or 14 years. And so, like, we don't need everything to happen right now. And what's weird is that the people that make really good dog trainers are really good goal setters, and they're really good at timelining, but oftentimes people that are good at goal setting, if those goals don't get met in accordance with the timeline that they've set forth for themselves, they get very frustrated. And that's kind of who I'm talking to in this video, is you guys who are really out there trying to do the best job you can do, right, but you are worried about like whether or not things are happening on the right timeline. Don't worry about it. It's not such a big deal, you know. Look here. So this little dog here. This little dog, uh, she was over on the north side of Lexington, real skinny, just kind of running around a neighborhood. And uh, a nice lady started feeding her out on her porch. And then, like, uh, eventually, uh, the dog, you know, was pretty wary. So, like, they would feed the dog, and then they would come outside, and the dog would run off. And then eventually they kind of built up a little bit of a relationship with the dog, but still, since it was a street dog, like, uh, if it got spooked at all, it would, you know, run away. Right? So this dog's a couple of years old, it comes down here, and we have to try to get it to where it trusts uh, trust us enough to stay with us and do what we would like for it to do and not run off when things aren't going its way. So again, we have to set a timeline that is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's comfortable and doable for this dog, and then the dog's owner, eh, she's, a, she's a little bit older, and so she can't do everything we can do here. You know what I'm saying? Like we get up and we get moving and we put a lot of miles in out here. A lot of walking, a lot of moving, a lot of four-wheeler riding, just a lot of stuff. And uh, that's hard. You know, that's especially hard if you're a little bit older. You can't do all those things. So in, the, in that case, 
we just stretch out you know our goals so we go okay instead of reaching these goals in uh, two months we're going to put these you know we're going to put these goals six months down the line or seven months down the line or eight months down the line good wait and as long as you are being consistent and and being persistent and and you're staying focused and and you are noticing incremental progress okay then you're going to do a good job and that's really the key wait easy it's just like make sure that when you're out working your dog like you're enjoying the process people get a little too fixated on the goal part and they you know they they forget to have fun right if i came out here every day and i got frustrated if, if a dog hadn't made the proper amount of progress since yesterday or since last week, then my whole day would just be me being upset one time after the other, after the other. And what kind of life is that to come out and be upset? You know, we're supposed to have dogs to add enjoyment to their, to our lives. And so as we're trying to add enjoyment to our lives, we can't let, we can't get too fixated on goals. If we get too fixated on goals, then what happens is we forget to have fun. And when we're not having fun, we're not reaching the goals. And so it's like a vicious cycle. It's a vicious circle of, of activities. Like, you know, we fixate on a goal and then the dog's not meeting the goal. So we get frustrated. And then we get frustrated, the dog doesn't enjoy the training. When the dog doesn't enjoy the training, we fall farther behind on our goals, right? And so that's what you got to stop doing. Let me see here what uh, I can look at. Uh, Marlo, hey Marlo, come here. Come on, Marlo. Marlo, come on. Okay, so right here, look here, see this, uh, see this Rhodesian Ridgeback running around? Okay, like it's going to take me a second to catch her. And uh, so, like, look, I've called her, and she's just going to kind of run around the perimeter here. And it's going to take me a minute to catch her because she's a little bit, uh, she's a little bit sketchy. You know what I'm saying? She's like, Stoney, what do you want me to do? I'm not sure. Are you calling me? Are you talking to me? She feels pressured. And when she feels pressured, like she kind of runs away from you. She doesn't go far away. She just kind of gets over on the edge of the activity. And she's like, Stoney, are you going to make me do something? Because I'm not sure if I want to do something. I'm kind of camera shy. And, uh, you know, I know I don't know how to do all these activities yet. And I don't want to fail. It's just like being a person. Right? If uh, you ask a dog to do something and they're naturally a little bit shy and what you're asking them to do, they're going to find it hard, then they have a tendency to not want to engage in that activity. Okay guys, well, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, about adjusting timelines. It's uh, going to take a little bit longer to rustle up Marlo than what I thought. Actually, Marlo started feeling real pressured because we called her and now she's ran all the way up to my house and she's up there looking down here like, look, if you guys are working, I'm going to stay up here till the work's done it's with you. Of all right, so we'll work Sadie and talk about that. And now that's the kind of stuff and it happens, it happens to everybody in a dog business, right? Every single person in a dog business knows what I'm talking about when I say that like you have to get up every day and you have to be willing to be pretty dang like uh, uh, you have to be pretty forgiving as it relates to what you want to accomplish that day because you just don't know what you're going to get you know uh, I've walked Marlo on the leash wait five or six times today right but just today just for right now she's just decided she didn't want to walk on the leash and so she just ran up to my house and just stood by the door like look I'm gonna go up here and hang out, and then uh, when y'all get done working, I'll come back down there. Or if you wanna come up here and go back in your office, I'll come uh, lay in the air conditioner. That's what you get sometimes, you know? So if I'm getting it out here, guys, I mean, why would you expect not to get it at your house? Of course you're gonna get it at your house. We all get it, wait. And all you can do is just keep plugging away. You know, so what do I do? I don't get frustrated, you know, cause that's an all day occurrence every day. I just sent somebody up there to get her and bring her back. You know, and so in the meantime, I don't want to be down on my productive time. So I walk Sadie and uh, practice. Good girl. All right. Well, it looks like they've got Marlo rustled up there. All right, Georgie, bring me Marlo. Come on, Marlo. Okay. For whatever reason, Marlo has decided that she just doesn't want to be a part of this training session. Okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I mean, not in the short run. There's nothing I can do. I can't go, oh, you have to like it. 
You can't make somebody like something in the short run. Now in the long run, of course you can make them like it because you get a chance to gradually, you know, show them how doing stuff leads to more fun stuff. But in the short run, guys, you're going to have plenty of sessions just like this. You know, like you see all these other dogs, they've come over here, I've asked them to put a leash on, they said, sure, I'd love to have the leash on, what would you like me to do? I'll put a nice solid effort out, right? And look at Marlo, she comes over here and she has zero effort, look, zero interest in working right now. Okay, and that's going to happen to you some. And so, like when I go in and I go to filling out my daily training journals, you know, I'm going to have to, like, I'm going to have to make a note of that. And I'm going to have to adjust our whole training for the week, right? Like one episode like that, now I have to make adjustments for a whole week. That, guys, that is what makes dog training an art, is you just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen day to day. Now, we trend upwards. Right? So here's what you start with. The dog it doesn't have very good impulse control. It won't come. It won't be still. It, won't have good, it doesn't have good manners. And you end up with the dog way up here. And it'll come. Be still. Has good manners. Has great impulse control. But the way up, it ain't like this. It ain't just steady every day up. It's up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. And that's for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's temperamental. Like these Rhodesian Ridgebacks, they can be a little... So you just saw one thing that might interrupt your timeline where the dog, for whatever reason, just doesn't, uh, doesn't show that much interest in an element of your training regimen. So you had some stuff planned for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and a dog was just like, you know, I'm, I'm really not into that. Okay, well they'll usually kind of come back around, but not always. Sometimes you have to train, change your whole training approach. Okay, now another thing that you'll run into, here, Georgie, bring me Hendrix. Okay, now like I've got this uh, German Shepherd puppy here. Oh my gosh, come here Hendrix. Now, so Hendrix, uh, he's a pretty good dog, and he came here, uh, and for the first two weeks he was here, he was making great progress. Everything was going perfectly, and then he started having growing pains, and that's just a thing that these German Shepherds go through. They'll start limping on one side, and then that'll go away, and they'll start limping on the other side. And so Hendrix, you know, he had a two-week period where we had to rest him, and he didn't get to do anything fun. You know, because when they're having those growing pains, what you'll hear people talk about is a pano. When they start having those growing pains, you can't let them out and get to playing around with the other dogs. You know, you got to put them up and rest them. And then they get, uh, you know, they get restless because they're not getting all their energy out like they should. Up, up, up. And then when you get back to your training regimen, like you have to, everything has to be done like with kid gloves. Everything has to be like super slow and super methodical, very deliberate. You know, you have to do everything just... Ah, it just takes a lot of extra time. You can't just, you know, work your way through the course. You can't allow any of the other dogs to be around the obstacles at all. Wait. You have to be very patient. Good. And you have to pick a, you know, a line on all your obstacles that's going to be easy for the dog to master. So this is just another example of the things that will get in the way of making progress, at least in the short term. And as a good trainer, what you have to do is you have to expect for these things to happen. What always surprises me is that people don't plan for failure. You literally have to plan for failure because that's what you're gonna get a whole lot of in the dog business. Come on, come on, buddy. Do you know, no, as a novice dog owner, you really don't understand how much doesn't go right. And, and, and part of that, you know, is people's like my fault. You know, I mean, I, you know, when I'm making videos, watch out, dude. When I'm making videos, I'm not gonna, make videos where like a whole bunch of stuff goes wrong in a row nobody wants to see that but on the other hand like look uh life is not about just clicking on one video after the other and the dogs just make they're just bam bam better 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 that's not how it works they get better and then they have a couple of bad days and they have a few good days and then a couple of bad days and it just you know over time you make incremental progress towards your ultimate goals but believe me, guys, we all have bad days. We all have bad training sessions. There's just no way around it. So, like, don't, don't, don't let that get you down. Don't, don't, let it, don't let it bother you, okay? It's just gonna happen. And you need to plan for it to happen. And I wish I would have done a better job, you know, in my early videos of, of letting people know that it's okay to fail. It, it, it really, it's okay to fail. You're not going to get through this process of raising a dog or a child without a certain amount of failures. If failures is where the big growth happens, you know. So keep that in mind as you go out and you try to, you know, uh, uh, reach those you know, short and long range goals. So I guess the whole point of this video really, guys, is that uh, don't be afraid of failure. You know, don't let it get you down. Don't, don't think because you, you know, didn't make the perfect amount of progress last week or in the last month that you need to panic. 
You know, you definitely don't need to send anybody an email and say, Stoney, I'm the worst dog trainer in the world. No, you're a fine dog trainer and you're going to do great. You're going to do fantastic. All you have to do to end up having a dog, an awesome dog that'll come and be still and have good manners, okay, is be consistent and be persistent. That's it. Just get them out, make sure they have a, to, they get to engage in a lot of physically and mentally demanding activities. Let them meet a lot of people, let them go a lot of places. Most of the learning that happens with a dog, it, it, it's learning by doing. It's getting out and doing fun stuff. And if you'll just get out and do fun stuff, focus on making a little bit of progress each week. It doesn't have to be a lot of progress, you know, just a little bit of progress each week and you're going to get to where you're going. You know, think about this. Like if I decided to walk to Lexington like this, backwards, with these little bitty steps, right? Okay, as long as I never gave up, where would I end up? I would end up in Lexington, right? It's just that simple. So just always keep in mind that forward progress, it's all you need. And some weeks it's gonna be a lot of forward progress, and some weeks it's gonna be just a teeny tiny amount of forward progress. But don't worry about it, because if you just keep plugging away, just chip away, chip away, chip away, chip away, Okay, before you know it, you have your final finished product. You know, just like if you're trying to have a nice diamond ring, you start with just some random, you know, lump of, lump of carbon and got chips and chips and chips and chips. And the next thing you know, there it is. You can give it to your lady and she's going to be happy for the rest of her lives. Look, that's it. That's the same thing with your dog training. You just chip away, chip away, chip away. And the next thing you know, you got a diamond, right? All right. So I'll see you guys next week. If your children are spending Saturday morning playing in the bed of a truck and in a stock tank pool with a bunch of dogs, well, my friend, you might also be a redneck dog trainer. <laughs>